Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. Is it okay to fly here? A good question to ask, and one I hear often, even from people who have their drone pilot certificate. In this video, I'll run through the checklist you should follow to answer this fundamental question. By the way, the checklist is built into the Drone Pilot Canada app. Here's the list. 1. Are you within an aerodrome keepout zone or controlled airspace? 2. Are you in any other potentially restricted areas? 3. Are there no TAMs in effect that would affect flying here? 4. Is there an advertised event happening here? And 5. Are there bystanders close to where you'll be flying? Let's walk through these one at a time. Okay, number one, are you within a keep out zone of an aerodrome or in controlled airspace? This one is very easy to determine using either the NRC Drone Site Selection Tool or the Drone Pilot Canada app. Simply go to your planned flight location and check for colored zones. I'll use an area just east of Edmonton as an example. In the NRC Drone Site Selection Tool, if you're in basic mode, keep out zones will be in red and caution zones will be in yellow. Red zones are either certified airports or heliports, military aerodromes, or controlled airspace that starts at the surface. In any of those cases, you cannot fly in the areas if you have only a basic pilot certificate. Here's the same area shown in Drone Pilot Canada. In both tools, yellow zones are caution areas around registered but not certified aerodromes. Okay, in the app, these areas are more orangey in color. You can fly in these yellow areas, but you must stay out of the way of manned aircraft and out of potential traffic patterns. You'll notice that the yellow areas are different shapes in the two tools. The NRC site decided to show only two kilometer wide runway sausages, as I call them, whereas we decided to be more conservative with Drone Pilot Canada and show a full three nautical mile caution circle around registered aerodromes. The intent is the same. Be aware of the aerodrome and possible air traffic. If you have an advanced pilot certificate, the colors on the NRC map change to orange for controlled airspace and areas around certified airports, meaning you need permission to fly in these areas. The colors and zones don't change in Drone Pilot Canada. In Drone Pilot Canada, clicking on these areas tell you exactly who you need to contact for permission to operate in these zones. Before moving on, I should state that the DJI Go4 FlySafe GeoZone map should not be used to determine safe flying locations in Canada. As you can see here, many aerodromes are missing and the keepout zones do not reflect the 2019 Canadian RPAS regulations. The second thing to check is whether you're planning on flying in an area that is restricted for some other reason. Parks are a prime example. National parks are shown on both the NRC tool and in Drone Pilot Canada. Recreational flying is prohibited in national parks, even to fly over them. Commercial flying is permitted, but only with permission of Parks Canada. As for provincial parks, the rules vary. Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Quebec, for example, outright say no to recreational flyers, but allow commercial flying with prior permission. To be safe, ask the park superintendent in advance. Some municipalities also have specific drone bylaws. Toronto's bylaw 1184-608 prohibits drone use in parks, for example. Check before you fly, and when you do fly, look for and obey no drone signs. By the way, technically restrictions like this apply to taking off or landing within the park, not flying over the park. Similarly, if you are flying from private property, obviously you must have the permission of the land owner to be on the property, let alone launch a drone from there. Generally speaking, you can fly over private property, but you can't take off or land without permission. Just common sense. And I'll speak about privacy issues in a few minutes. The third thing to check is no TAMs, or notice to airmen, and other time-dependent restrictions. 
NOTAMs are issued for all sorts of temporary changes to airspace. For drones, you need to be particularly aware of things like air shows, fireworks, forest fires, and blasting. Here's a NOTAM referencing drones. Stay away from any event where drones are specifically prohibited. To search for NOTAMs, go to the Nav Canada NOTAM website and type in the name of a major city nearby or the airport code if you know it. By the way, even if there is no NOTAM, you must stay away from any natural disaster or other emergency site. In any of these cases, you absolutely must not run the risk of interfering with air ambulances, police helicopters, or water bombers. If a tornado rips through town, do not go out there and film the aftermath without explicit permission from authorities. Next is advertised events. An advertised event is any gathering that has been announced publicly, whether that be a sports event, music concert, a craft market, or heaven forbid, a returning victorious sports team. You need to have an SFOC to fly at an advertised event, a special flight operating certificate. That said, if you stay at least 30 meters beyond the outer perimeter of such an event, you should be okay and shouldn't need an SFOC. Finally, at the time of the flight, you need to stay well away from bystanders. With basic operations, you must stay 30 meters away from bystanders. With an advanced operations pilot certificate and an approved drone, you can go as close as 5 meters from bystanders. A very small number of drones have also been approved for flying over bystanders, which means closer than 5 meters. Check the Transport Canada drone safety page for the list of these drones. All of these distances are horizontal distances, regardless of your altitude. Also, keep in mind that the restrictions don't apply to the pilot, anyone in your crew, like a visual observer, or anyone else who is involved in the operation. People who are involved in the operation are people you may be flying near, but they have been informed and are okay with you flying near or even over them. Be careful though, everyone in the operational zone needs to agree. Also note that people inside buildings or otherwise sheltered don't count as bystanders either. This can be particularly important when taking real estate drone shots, for example, in urban areas. Now, everyone asks the question, what if someone walks into my flight area so I'm no longer 30 meters away from them? Well, common sense should apply. If possible, move the drone further away. If you're in the process of landing, politely ask the people to stand clear. Most people are reasonable if you're polite and respectful. And when you've landed, take the time to talk to them and show them your drone if they express an interest. While it's a bit tangential to the topic of can I fly here, I'll just say a few words about privacy. There are no special privacy laws for drones, but all the regular privacy laws still apply. You can't be taking pictures where there is a reasonable expectation of privacy, for example around someone's backyard pool. I would recommend following the golden rule of would it bother me if someone was taking pictures of my stuff as a good rule of thumb. Try to avoid including private property or bystanders in your filming. Show respect, and if someone complains, apologize and move along. By the way, there's a good set of guidelines on the Transport Canada's drone safety site talking about privacy. Whew, that uh, sounds like a lot to keep track of, and it is. But it's exactly why these checks and precautions should be built into your pre-flight checklists. And they are built into the standard checklists that come with the Drone Pilot Canada app. Let's review the list. Are you within an aerodrome keepout zone or controlled airspace? Are you in any other potentially restricted areas? Are there no TAMs in effect that would affect flying here? Is there an advertised event happening here? Are there bystanders close to where you'll be flying? I hope this video has been helpful and clarifies the steps you need to take to fly safely and legally. Happy flying! 
please leave comments below the video, and if you haven't already done so, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to receive notifications of future videos. Thanks for watching.